Hey, what's up guys? I want to do a new knife review. Uh, today I'm talking about a Schrade Melon Tester. There's lots of different names for these uh, knives. Melon Tester is the, the most common. Uh, also called a Fruit Tester, sometimes called a Citrus Tester, and even called a Sausage Knife. Because uh, a lot of people will use these to you know, prepare sausage links or salami, stuff like that. Uh, pepperoni, you know, like the long cured sticks, and just, you know, cut off like a cheese platter or something like that. A really interesting knife. I uh, referenced these before, said I always wanted one, and I have a Schrade one now. Um, and it's really cool. It's really rich in history. It's actually one of the uh, newer slip joint patterns. I say newer. These came out around the 1930s here in America, I believe in the late 1800s uh, in Europe. But um, on the grand scheme of things, as far as slip joint patterns go, it is relatively new. Uh, a lot of people say that the original purpose for these, being called a melon tester, was to do plugs in watermelons uh, to see if they were ripe. Basically, you would use the elongated blade and you make three cuts uh, in a triangular pattern and basically pull out a plug of the fruit uh, to test it and look at it and see if it was ripened yet. This way you know kind of you know, your whole patch of watermelons if they're going to be ready to go. But of course, someone who's professionally growing watermelons and used to it, there's other ways they can find out. They don't actually have to plug them. But originally, or at least, uh, you know, so people say, that's what they do. They pull the plug out, take a look at it, and then, of course, put it back in um, to let that specific watermelon continue to ripen instead of rot. But, uh, I don't know, it's really fascinating. It's interesting. I love the long, slender blades on these. Generally speaking, um, there's going to be two different kinds. For the most part, you're going to have one with just a, um, a single blade, and mo more times than not, it's a spear point blade. Uh, or jack blade um, and the other version you'll see of this is basically a large blade and also a smaller one most of the time it's going to be on the same side okay it's not going to be on the opposite end however there are uh, a lot of these older patterns from the 50s and 60s that had um, two blades one on each end one was plain edge one was serrated the serrated one you know was usually and it was kind of like a bread knife type serrations and that was specifically used for sausage uh, there are even some models out there that have a, uh, a smaller pen style blade on the very back. But uh, generally speaking, they're not of uh, you know, awesome quality. Uh, WR Case and Sons does make a few different uh, melon tester designs. Very nice, very high end. You're looking anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks, depending on you know, handle scales and so forth. But those ones will hold a fantastic edge. This is just a generic, I mean, the blade is marked. Now, as you can see on this one, it's, it's marked razor blade stainless, which means absolutely nothing to any of us, uh, to the average person. They might think that's cool or special. But basically, it's a, uh, a 440 variant steel, probably low end, maybe a 440, uh, 440A or something similar to that. Um, you know, they come relatively sharp. So here's a piece of printer paper. This is what you can expect out of the box. You know, it's not completely clean, but it will slice paper. It's fine for its intended purpose which is to obviously test melons or fruit. Okay, little imperfections along the blade. You know, mass produced, they're not, they're not of uh, what you would consider sharp. I mean, they're sharp enough, but for most of us out there, I mean, particularly if you're a knife guy or been into the knife hobby for a long time, you know what, what real sharp knives are. But for the average person, they would consider this pretty sharp. And uh, again, for its intended purpose, which would be to test fruit or maybe cut up different types of fruit, you know, cut up an apple, cut up an orange, stuff like that, melons specifically, uh, it's going to be just fine. You don't have to worry, but you don't need a razor sharp hair popping edge <laughs> to cut up an apple, you know, or to cut some watermelon or some cantaloupe or something. Uh, obviously, the benefit of having a long blade is to accommodate uh, for larger fruit. You know, if you ever tried cutting, I mean, I've done it in the past, even though I'm a knife guy, I've taken like a little paring knife with a three inch blade and I try to, you know, cut an apple in half or something. And it's kind of like you have to rotate the fruit while you're doing it. Yeah, I know. It's not the right knife for the job. And oh my God, cutlery lovers using the wrong knife. It happens. I'm a person, you know, sometimes I'll just grab something that's there. But um, it's really interesting. Uh, here's the box I just have in the background to show you what it comes with. That's it. Um, generally speaking, these... Uh, these will have an imitation ivory handle or a yellow-ish type handle. Most of them are yellow. However, the ones from WR Case and Sons come in a variety of, of uh, you know, colors. And, you know, they have a stag one. They have a beautiful, beautiful abalone one. But uh, this one is just a uh, um, Durlin plastic handle. And it's just yellow. Really simple construction. Not a whole lot of uh, finishing processes here. Basically, you just have your, uh, your blade, obviously. You have a stainless um, back spring on here. You have brass liners, okay, and then uh, some brass pins, rivet construction. There you can see the uh, the tang, 
marked with the model SS105 and then Schrade. This is newer Schrade, this is not the old Schrade. Um, this one sells for around 10 bucks. You can get these at Bud K for $9.99. Uh, many other websites sell anywhere from 10 to $15 or so plus shipping. Uh, for that money, it's an interesting piece for a collection. If you are someone who likes the uh, older type knives, you want to collect different types of slip joint patterns, it's definitely an interesting conversation piece. It is a nicer uh, functional blade. Now, of course, this doesn't make a great EDC knife. I'm going to make a whole video talking about that. Um, of course, if you want to carry something like this and open boxes and you know cut strings off your shirt and you know maybe cut tape off of something, cut a zip tie, it's going to work fine. This specific knife is not uh, purposely built for hard use. It is somewhat flimsy. You can see even in here, you have flex. It's not necessarily, I mean, there's no real blade play uh, side to side. I and mean, if I were to hold the pivot area, it's not really blade play so much as that the entire blade and handles can flex. All right. Might be hard to see, but the whole thing flexes just slightly because it's just plastic and brass. Um, the stainless steel in the back isn't really substantial here. Uh, there's no real um, half stop on this one. What makes a lot of great high-end uh, slip joints is having a half stop. It's just one of the many small details that would make a slip joint uh, higher quality or higher end. Uh, at this point, there is somewhat of a stoppage in the middle, and that's just because of how the tang's shaped on that back spring, but it's not really what I would consider a half stop, okay? And the, uh, the tension on the back spring is it's very little. Uh, it's very easy to open a knife, which is great for everyone. Some people don't like a really stiff knife. It's hard to really get in there. Does have a, a nail nick on the blade. You're supposed to use a thumbnail to get that started. Sometimes if you find old slip joints like this, you'll or not specifically like this, but any slip joint, they'll be a little rusty because oftentimes they're not cared for. They're left in tackle boxes or something, and you're really struggling to get that thing open, and you break your fingernail, you know. Uh, but this one is really, really easy to get uh, open. Uh, in fact, you can use your pinky and thumb. This is a test that I personally do. I heard this from an old timer at a, a gun show years and years ago, and I like it. Any slip joint, uh, quality or not, you should be able to open it with your thumb and your pinky. If you cannot open it like that, it's too tight. Either your pivot's too tight or it's rusted, needs to be lubricated, something like that. I kind of like it, kind of makes sense, so it's a quick little test. But anyway, yeah, certainly passes that test. It's a light back spring. Uh, in that case, you know, be careful. Obviously, you're putting pressure towards your edge, so it shouldn't be an issue, but if you bump into something, it doesn't really take a whole lot to close that. Now, if you do put your thumb pressure on the back of the handle here, it will help, certainly, because what you're doing is you're pushing down on the back spring, so you're, you're making it less of a chance to rise, but, you know, similar as to maybe a friction folder, but it's not, it's nothing definite. If you were to bump into something enough, it would close on you and probably cut you pretty bad. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's really an interesting piece. Uh, it's not something, like I said, to EDC. It's not something to carry to use all the time. It's purpose-built. Like a lot of different slip joints, you can use them for anything. They have sharp edges. However, they are specifically made for certain tasks, which is pretty interesting. It is long. Big old blade. I mean, open here, we're looking at a, um, a 10 and a half inches completely open. The blade is four and three quarter inches long, but the actual sharpened edge is only four and a quarter inches. And you got five and three quarter inches closed. All right, really lightweight, only uh, three ounces, 3.1 ounces to be specific, at least on my scale. So it's like nothing. Uh, you're going to be hard pressed to find um, four and a quarter inches of cutting edge in a, uh, a very light package like this, three ounces. So in that case, it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty convenient if you do need a larger knife or something. But again, remember that it's not a very sturdy knife. Of course, there's no locking system on this. And uh, generally speaking, if you were to put enough force on this uh, backwards, I would imagine this having some kind of an issue where it would to snap or at least compromise the uh, stability of the knife overall. Now, I've talked to the, in the past uh, on perhaps even carrying something like a melon tester for self-defense. Now, a lot of people would scoff at that idea. They would think that's absolutely ridiculous. Now, I would not personally carry a cheap melon tester for that reason, that it could possibly break, even if you were to use it um, in a defensive role. Even if you were to cut into flesh there's, and you hit bone, there's a possibility of your whole knife actually breaking. But if you were to get a quality uh, melon tester knife, I think that it's, in a lot of different ways, although it's not superior as far as defensive blades go, when it comes time to go to court, because if you do have to use a knife to defend your life, you know, you will go to court, it looks a heck of a lot better. You know, first of all, there is no lock on it. That's a downside for you as using it in the defensive role, but uh, it's a huge bonus in saying that, yeah, you know what, this is a utility knife. It's something I use to cut open boxes, cut open my mail. I'm not carrying it to, to find someone to hurt, okay? So I certainly wasn't carrying a lethal weapon. I was carrying a tool. That goes great for you uh, as far as a court case goes. 
But you know, that's nor here or there. I'm not one to say, hey, carry this knife for defense or carry that knife. You know, in reality, most of you guys out there who do carry knives for defense, you will never use them. And that's a good thing. So it's nothing to worry about. Just something to consider. Um, <laughs> yes, that's Gus snoring again in the background. I apologize for the noise. But anyway, we're closing in on the end of the review here anyway. Uh, it's a really interesting knife. I like it. I love the history of slip joints. I mean, they are all very, you know, purpose-built, useful knives. And yes, this knife will work just fantastic to cut open an orange, you know, wedge an orange. Or, like I said, if I was doing some kind of a, uh, you know, spread cheese platter with meats and stuff like that, get a big old hard salami, cut it up in the slices, it would work great. There's nothing wrong with it. And actually, it's a really beautiful display piece, too. If I were to do something like that, if I had company over, you get a nice wooden plank, you know, get some good high-grade cheese, make some slices, keep like half of your, you know, cheese log intact, leave it on the wood, you got your salami there. And just everything, as far as presentation is concerned, this little knife, oh, well, I shouldn't say little knife, this uh, <laughs> bigger five and three quarter inch uh, knife on the board, just like that, in case you run out of sausage, they can actually get the knife themselves and open it and cut a little piece off. It's pretty cool. And for 10 bucks, I think it's worth it. It's nice to, uh, to have in any collection because it is something to talk about. If you happen to display your collections or if you happen to be showing off a collection, people say, oh, that's pretty cool. And you get into the whole thing. Yes, this is a melon tested. This is how they used to use them. You know, generally speaking, it's a newer pattern from the 1930s. Oh, really? That seems old. And it's like a whole conversation, at least for knife people. For the average person, whatever. It's a big Foley knife. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think they're interesting. I'd like to uh, get some more in the future. I'd like to get a hold of uh, one of the case ones, which I'm hoping to do sometime down the line when it's appropriate, and uh, do another video on one. And I kind of compare a real quality high-end uh, melon tester to something like this, which is much more affordable. But uh, that's pretty much it. It's a Schrade uh, SS105 melon tester. Uh, I think it's a really interesting knife. No, it's not a great knife as far as overall quality. It's a cheap knife, it's an affordable knife, but it is still interesting nonetheless. As much as I love modern knives, tactical knives, frame locks, you know, triad lock, I, you know, you gotta get the biggest, the fattest, the best. It's all cool, it's all dandy, but uh, I have a huge appreciation for old knives, okay? Folding knives are my thing. I love fixed blades too, but I'm definitely a folding knife guy, and I love to see the roots of where folding knives started. And it all started with very simplistic designs, you know, minimalist knives, no lock, no, uh, you know, extra parts, handle, blade, back spring. That's it. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you soon. Take care.